everybody, I'm Chris Perillo, and this is your Geek Out for Thursday, August 9th, 2012. Our Geek Out is brought to you by Go to Assist from Citrix. You can take control of your IT world from one simple cloud-based platform, and Go to Assist's proactive alerting allows you to fix small issues before they become big problems. And you know, if you want a free 30-day trial, you can get one. Just head over to gotoassist.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PERILLO. If you missed the news, I did talk with Doug Swanson of Malwarebytes yesterday. We've written up a synopsis of that particular interview in case you do want to read more about it. And of course, we have the link to the video in that article in this video's description. IFTTT recipes to help save you money. I am so happy that Ryan Pearson wrote up this article, if only because one, I love saving money, and two, because I happen to like IFTTT, short for if this, then that. In fact, I created an if this, then that recipe that will automatically email you my latest Instagram photo as soon as I upload it to Instagram so you can get an email notification. And you can even use that recipe. You can use anybody's recipes so long as they share them. You can create your own recipes on If This Then That. What are you waiting for? Take a look. Uh, he's got a link to the iTunes free app of the week, top free music albums from Amazon, Kindle Top 100 free eBooks. Wow, you can save a lot of money and spend nothing. The lessons of Steve Jobs, the marketing of dreams. There's one thing that I've learned over the years is that you can't sell features. You can sell benefits, however. I mean, I could sit here and tell you, oh, this phone's got this big of a screen and that fast of a processor, but you don't care. How's that gonna benefit your life? This phone will allow you to talk to the dead. Oh, okay, that, I can see how that would, that's a benefit. That's a huge benefit. My life will be better because of the phone. The screen is this big. It's, it's, it's a spec. The average user doesn't care about a spec. That's not what inspires them to move forward. We are emotionally attached to the decisions we make. Don't believe me? Uh, do you want to get into a political or religious discussion? Yeah, let's talk emotion. Steve Jobs was a master at this. Even if you never liked Apple, you don't like any of the products, you didn't even like Apple's philosophy as dictated by Steve Jobs, you can't deny it. He's a visionary. And we've got our second uh, essay as a part of a short series this week related to what we could possibly learn from Steve Jobs. Fluoridation lowers IQ significantly? Some people say this is a conspiracy theory, but there's science behind this statement. I'm not the one who's telling you this. Uh, so, uh, someone else is. We're just reporting what is well, it's plain as day. And it's not to say that you're going to be dumb if you keep, you know, drinking water that has fluoride in it, or, you know, if you've got some kind of mouth liquid, mouth liquid, not saliva, mouth liquid, but like, you know, a mouthwash or like toothpaste, something that you stick in your mouth that has fluoride in it. Uh, I don't know. Do you feel dumber after you brush your teeth? You know, who am I to say that there's not a connection? I mean, every day it comes around. In fact, I also saw something on Slashdot this morning that the butter they use in the popcorn at movie theaters, that, well, there's, there's a, a, a chemical in it that may possibly connect, be connected to Alzheimer's. Digestible microchips heading to pharmacies near you. Nanotechnology is just so much fun. It's really exciting to think about a time in the not too distant future when drugs, instead of being crafted for everybody, will be crafted specifically for you and target something that's in you that you wanna get rid of. I mean, genetic therapies kind of there. Pharmaceuticals, they're going to make a lot of money, that's for sure. But the idea of these personalized drugs being assisted by technology, I, I don't know, would you, would you want to swallow a microchip? We also have a link to a product review of the HP LaserJet P1102W um, using budget laser print cartridges, and apparently this involves a fire. You may want to take a look. Google will pay $22.5 million to settle FTC changes. That's all? Google makes that in less than a second. Kaspersky Lab discovers Gauss cyber threat designed to monitor online banking accounts. I do believe this one is being targeted at the Middle East, but we all know what happens when you put code into the wild. It can get anywhere. Speaking of, uh, did you hear there's now something called super gonorrhea? I'm not kidding. Google it or Bing it. 
if you want. Snail mail photos with friends with Facebook's new postcards feature. Wow, that's actually kind of neat. I've received postcards from Instagram photos. You saw me, well, I guess showing you the one I received in the vlog the other day, and I just got another one today uh, from the guy who I sold my PSP to, which apparently uh, the battery was dead, so I may have to see about getting him a replacement battery. Amazon Cloud Player now available on Sonos Wireless Hi-Fi system. Woohoo! I have an Amazon Cloud Music account, whatever they're calling it, and I also have a Sonos system. Uh, and uh, I think I'll be uh, going through all my archives and putting everything onto Amazon, if only because of that. Sorry about that, I've, I've got gas. The Windows Metro experience, or UI, is now just called, get this, Windows 8. So you know how we talk about the classic desktop, the Aero experience? Remember Luna from Windows XP? Well, they can't call it Metro because of some issues somewhere in the UK, uh, and they don't want to you know, you know, spend any more money than they need to. I mean, heaven knows they need as much as they can keep. Uh, but it's now called Windows 8, not Metro. You can't call it Metro, and you can, you can call it Metro, but Microsoft's calling it Windows 8, and they'll get mad if you if you call it Metro. It's Windows 8. That's the best they could come up with. So creative. Windows 8. Now, with more Windows 8-ishness. No, they wouldn't say ishness. Although that would be preferred. LockerGnome.net user, and I would say one of our biggest supporting contributors in the community. Uh, he's always tweeting. I see him active on Facebook and Google+. Bharat Kumar Gupta asks, uh, why are mobile tablet screen protectors expensive? Boils down to quality of materials. One, and two, because people want to protect their screens. So they may be willing to spend a little more money. And that doesn't mean if you buy something that's expensive, it's worth what you've paid for. You should certainly read reviews. Uh, it just comes down to, I would say, quality of material and ability to work. I, I can tell you I've used more crappy screen protectors in my life than I have good screen protectors. And I, I don't think I could place a monetary value on a good screen protector. I, I, if I really wanted to do it, I would spend as much as I would possibly be able to spend. LockerGnome.net user Ghostly Escape writes, how can I become a guest blogger on LockerGnome? It's easier than you think. We accept guest bloggers every single day. If you have something to say, and here's the thing, uh, I don't necessarily care about your age. If you can write well, and that doesn't just mean, oh, spelling here and grammar there and punctuation over there. It means you can form a cohesive thought. It doesn't read like it was a paper you just submitted in school. You can use your personal voice. You've got a story to tell. Something about geek culture. Maybe something you're very passionate about. Maybe it has nothing to do with technology, but it's still within the geek realm of sci-fi or fantasy or possibly gaming in a perspective that nobody's covered before. I mean, that's the kind of guest blogging we want to see. Yeah, I, I like reporting the day's news as well, although to report it, you've got to include insight, not just regurgitating a press release or writing something that somebody else has written or anybody could have written. Bring your voice to the table, man. And I can tell you, I read, you know, emails, hey Chris, I wanna, you know, possibly, you know, write for Locker Gnome. And I can tell within the first sentence that there's no possible way I would ever publish that person online. I'm not trying to offend anybody if you've never been published on Locker Gnome. It's just that we're looking for people who can write and form a cohesive thought and present it with a personal voice. I mean, let's just do that. I mean, if we can do that, that'd be great. Just drop me a line, chris at perillo.com. I, I know you, you've you done this before. Well, some of you have, not all of you have, but it's really easy. It's that simple. But if, if you don't get a response from me, don't be sad, don't be dejected. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're kicked out or anything because you can still participate. It's just that for the articles that we're trying to produce for Locker Dome, we're, we're looking for that, that style. We, we want it to match that style. Hopefully you appreciate that. I mean, you like the content we do for you now, right? Chris, what is your favorite thing about living in Seattle? 
I, I actually like the weather. I, I like the weather. I like uh, how easy it is to get around. Uh, I I do like the people generally, the culture or the idea that you know, there are a lot of cultures around here that kind of blend into one. We're very laid back, but we can get business done. Uh, it's not like a rat race. Uh, yeah, there, there's all those things combined that to me just adds up to a, a quality of life. That's it. I, I'm done. I don't really have anything else to say other than thanks for liking this video. We'll see you later.